Hey guys, Tanner44 here, I need no introduction, but I got one anyway. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Hanna-Barbera classic, Wacky Races, huh? The old Hanna-Barbera classic, Wacky Races, released in 1965. The classic racing show of unforgettable characters competing for the title of the world's wackiest racer. All these characters include the Slag Brothers, the Gruesome Twosome, Professor Pat Pending, Red Mats, Penelope Pitstop, Sergeant Blash and his psychic Private Meekly, the Anthill Mob, Lazy Luke and Blubber Bear, Peter Perfect, Rufus Ruff Cut and Sawtooth, and Dick Dastardly and Mutley. This wacky racing show had everything we could have wanted from a show as crazy as this. A wild range of characters, crazy antics, and a classic villain and his psychic to ruin everyone's time. Whether you enjoyed watching the various races' wacky antics and their unique driving cars, or whether you enjoyed seeing Dick Dastardly and Muttley try to cheat their way to victory, this show had something for everyone that loved crazy cartoon antics and racing. And the show was so popular that it spawned numerous spin-offs throughout the years. One of the most popular ones was The Perils of Penelope Pitstop, starring Penelope Pitstop and the Antill Mob. But the wacky racer spin-off I'm more familiar with is the classic starring Dick Dastardly and Muttley, that show being Dastardly and Muttley in their flying machines. <laughs> Dastardly and Muttley in their flying machines, or simply Dastardly and Muttley in the UK and Ireland, is an American animated television series produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and the spin-off to Wacky Races. The show was originally broadcast as a Saturday morning cartoon airing from September the 13th, 1969 to January the 3rd, 1970 on CBS. The show focuses on the efforts of Dick Dastardly and his canine psychic Muttley to catch Yankee Doodle Pigeon, a carrier pigeon who carries secret messages. It was funny seeing Dick Dastardly and Muttley of all characters get their own spin-off show from Wacky Races, considering the fact that they have the most screen time in Wacky Races. But it's definitely a fun show to watch. There's an interesting bit of trivia for you guys. The original working title of the show was actually Stop the Pigeon, and it wasn't even going to have Dastardly and Muttley in it. It was going to have two original characters in it, and they would have Silly and Clunk as their sidekicks trying to catch the pigeon. But because Dick Dastardly and Muttley were so popular in Wacky Races, Hanna-Barbera decided to spin them off into that show. In Germany, Dick Dastardly and Muttley, the villains from Wacky Races, are now flying aces in World War I style airplanes and members of the Vulture Squadron on a mission to stop a messenger pigeon named Yankee Doodle Pigeon from delivering top secret messages to an opposing army. The other members of the squadron are Clunk, an inventor who speaks in a wild language, punctuated by howls, clicks, whistles, and growls accompanied by bizarre facial expressions, and Zilly, a panicky pilot whose main role is to translate for Clunk, and who tries to desert the mission at any given opportunity. <laughs> the whole idea of the show takes inspiration from World War I, where you have Dastardy commanding his own squadron of flyers who are trying to stop a pigeon from getting a message across enemy lines. And even though you have no idea what the hell that message is, then you don't really care because it's just entertaining to watch Dastardly and his crew try and fail to catch him. Each story features variations of the same plot elements. The Vulture Squadron sets out to trap Yankee Doodle Pigeon, a process which begins with Silly trying to escape and being retrieved by Muttley, and Clunk introducing a plan that involves using one or more planes equipped with his latest contraptions. Inevitably, either the plan is flawed, or one or more of the squadron messes up and the planes either crash, collide, or explode, all of the above. While they have fallen out of the wreckage, Dick Dastardly calls for help, which Muttley offers, depending on whether Dastardly either agrees or disagrees to give him medals. Even when Muttley does agree to fly Dastardly out of trouble, Dastardly seldom has a soft landing, at some point, the General calls Dastardly on the phone to demand results, and while Dastardly assures him that they will soon capture the Pigeon, the General usually disbelieves him and bellows through the phone to Dastardly, and manages to extend his hand from it to either grab Dastardly by the nose or his moustache. Hello? Oh, it's you, General. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, sir. Dastardly has captured the Pigeon, and he's gone by the end of every story, Yankee Doodle Pigeon escapes while the Vulture Squadron is often left in backfiring predicaments. The show features everything that we love about Dick Dastardly and Muttley, how they come up with brand new schemes to stop their enemies and how it ultimately backfires. Of course we have Dastardly and Muttley as the main characters, once again played by Paul Winchell and Don Messick. 
And not that much has changed with Dastardy's personality. He's still the despicable sneaky villain that we all love from Wacky Races. Did Dastardy is just as entertaining in flying machines as he was in Wacky Races? Always trying to come up with brilliant plans to stop the pigeon from getting the message passed and always failing at every turn. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so sneaky, I don't even trust myself. Except here he's got a few more details compared to his wacky racer's appearance. He wears a World War One pilot-esque uniform that sticks true to his purple and red colour scheme from wacky races. Paul Winchell just brings so much life to the character of Dick Dastardly that it's become one of his most iconic roles after Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. I mean, you could tell from every recording that Paul Winchell was just having a blast playing this character. And it shows since he kept coming back to play the character until his retirement. And he still has that famous catchphrase. But Dastardly wouldn't be Dastardly without his trusty canine companion Muttley, voiced by Don Messick. <laughs> Some changes have been made to Muttley as well through the series while keeping him the same as he always was in Wacky Races. Compared to the original show, he wears a flyer scarf and a flyer's helmet. Muttley also remained pretty much the same as he was in Wacky Races, but they developed his character even more in this show by making him metal hungry. Whenever Dastardly wants him to do something, like for instance save him from falling or make sure Zilly doesn't run away from a mission, Muttley always demands a medal from him. And he has one of the funniest reactions to getting a medal of all time. <laughs> Does that mean you want a medal? <laughs> oh, alright. Yeah. Well, he's not the first Hannibal Bear dog to do a crazy overreaction to get in something he wants. Uh, 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 uh. Catch! <laughs> Ask your grandparents if you don't know where the hell that's from. And there's another side to Muttley that we never got to see in Wacky Races that they showed in this show, but I'll get to that in a bit. But to help Dastardly and Muttley catch the pigeon, they had two new sidekicks, Zilly and Clunk. Clunk, voiced by Don Messick, is the inventor who will often come up with new gadgets and machineries attached to airplanes to help them catch the pigeon. He tends to speak in a wild manner, often blurting out random sound effects while talking in a sentence. And because Dastardly doesn't understand a word he's trying to tell him, Zilly is always the one that has to translate for him. Getting to voice Clunk was the perfect opportunity for Don Messick to show off the many vocal effects that he could do in his time as a voice actor. And all the funny noises Clunk makes are very damn hilarious. Messick also voices Zilly, the cowardly pilot who's always trying to get away from going on a mission to catch Yankee Doodle Pigeon whenever he has the chance. And his attempts are always foiled by Dastardly and Muttley. Get in your planes, the pigeon is coming! The running gag with Zilly is that whenever he's very scared and doesn't want to do anything he doesn't want to do, then he'll shove his head down his coat like a tortoise, sort of like a defense mechanism. And the fly in their ointments in the series is Yankee Doodle Pigeon, a carrier pigeon who's always tasked with sending messages out from enemy lines. The Vulture Squadron are always trying to capture him to stop him from getting the message through, but their attempts always fail. Yankee Doodle Pigeon is who I consider to be the Hanna-Barbera equivalent of the Roadrunner from Looney Tunes. Always trying to get away from his predators and always succeeding because of their own failures. But the biggest mystery the show had, and thinking about it today, is what were those messages that Yankee Doodle Pigeon was getting over enemy lines? No one really knows. The show also had a various range of guest characters that would appear in one specific episode throughout the series. They would usually be there to help enhance the plot whenever needed. And rather than bringing in guest voice actors to voice these new characters that would only appear in one episode and then never be seen again, 
They just have Paul Winchell and Don Messick voice every single one of them as well as the main characters. It's just a great way to show the two some dynamic with each other and their great range as voice actors. It's one thing to have at least five or six actors in a Hanna-Barbera cartoon doing several voices, but to only have two actors in one show doing several voices for many characters, that's great skill the two have. And even though it was the same formula with every episode, they always spiced it up a bit by having the characters make new inventions and often show up in new locations aside from their hangar. It was just a good way to spice up a plot that was very predictable for each episode. And it helps that they brought in writer Michael Maltese for the series, who was well known for writing a lot of Bugs Bunny shorts in the Merry Melodies and Looney Tunes cartoons. He was one of those writers who always took something that was predictable and managed to make it work in each episode, giving it variety. But it wasn't just catching pigeons that made Dastardly and Muttley and their flying machines so entertaining. It was the set of shorts that accompanied the cartoons. The show also featured Dimwings, a series of shorts with jokes. And these jokes are really funny when you watch them back to back. And I loved the Dimwings so much that I used them as inspiration for my second co-shorts, Sex Shorts. I'd either use the same plot lines from Dimwings or I'd come up with something original. But the majority of it was always based off of Dimwings. I just loved it that much. There was one magnificent Muttley episode in each of the 17 broadcasted episodes. Muttley is the main character and imagines himself in a lot of situations, with Dastly in the role as the villain. Dastly's car, the meme machine from Wacky Races, often made cameos in a few episodes and shorts. And this was the other ambition of Muttley that I was about to tell you about. It seems like Muttley has bigger ambitions in his life other than just flying in the Vulture Squadron and serving under the orders of Dick Dastardly. No matter what Muttley was daydreaming, Dick Dastardly was always going to be the main villain of whatever he was dreaming about. Which shows that Muttley has bigger ambitions than just working for Dick Dastardly in his life. Hail! Hail! Dick Dastardly, the notorious safe cracker, is cracking my safe! Oh, keep quiet, you thick snitch! In each segment, he'd be doing a specific job or doing a task for Dastardly. And whatever task he was doing, he'd imagine himself in a different scenario. And his dreams would either end naturally, or they'd be interrupted by Dick Dastardly telling him to snap out of it. Some magnificent Muttley shorts would feature Muttley's unnamed girlfriend, also voiced by Don Messick. The same breeder dog as Muttley, who would normally show up whenever there was a damsel in distress needed for the daydreams. Someone for Muttley to save from Dastardly. Either Magnificent Muttley was the inspiration for Hutsley Pig, or it's just a crazy coincidence since the two are quite similar. Main character having a daydream, doing whatever they want to do in the daydream, and then waking up in reality again. It's just a crazy coincidence that the two have the similar premise. But when Muttley wasn't daydreaming, he'd always go back to catching the pigeon with Dastardly, Clunk and Zilly. My guess is it's because he wants to stay on Dastardly's good side. The show ran for 17 episodes from 1969 to 1970 and I find it a shame that it wasn't as long lived as Wacky Races because I really love this cartoon. It features two of my favourite characters from Wacky Races and two of my favourite villains of all time and gives them their own show. Despite being a short lived show, Dastardly and Muttley and their flying machines gained a lot of popularity from fans of Hanna-Barbera and animation fans in general and in 2005 Warner Home Video released the complete series on DVD which featured all 17 episodes of the show, commentary on various episodes, combinations of some of the greatest moments from the show, and a retrospective documentary about the spin-off series. And of course, Dastardly and Muttley were so popular that they would end up showing up in many other cartoons from Hanna-Barbera, a number of them featuring Yogi Bear as the main character, and the most recent appearance was in the CGI movie Scoop. So it's needless to say that Dastardly and Muttley have become some of the most iconic characters in animation history. In my mind, Dastardly and Muttley and Their Flying Machines is one of the best cartoons ever created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. It's a lot of fun to see these two popular characters from Wacky Races get their own show, and we get to see more of their personalities in the spin-off. It has two existing characters in their own show and makes it work in every episode, giving us lots of laughs, cartoon slapstick, entertainment, and it shows off the personalities of two of our favourite Hanna-Barbera villains. While some spin-off series tend to not be as great as the original show, or even come closest to being as great as the show that it was based on, Dastardly and Muttley and Their Flying Machines is definitely one of the spin-offs that holds up in my opinion. Dastardly and Muttley and Their Flying Machines was one of the best spin-off series to come out of Wacky Races, and it continues to hold up to this day. 
you haven't seen this show yet or haven't seen it in a while, I'd highly recommend checking it out if you love slapstick comedy and did dastardly and muttly. It's definitely one of the greatest cartoons ever made by Hanna-Barbera, and it won't disappoint you with its entertaining stories. I'm Dolly44, and I'll see you next time, folks. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the old Hanna-Barbera classic wacky... Classic? What the fuck's a classic? What am I saying classic for? I'm supposed to say classic.